Hey there, ladies and gents. In this video, I'm going to be making a live answer key to our review packet here with a little explanation as we go. So that way, if you're looking through this as a digital copy and you don't understand why, hopefully the explanation will come into play. So first, we need to solve the following quadratics by factoring. That typically means I need to break these down into two parentheses chunks. Uh, as I go through, every time I look for a GCF on number one, there is no GCF. So I can start off with an X in each parenthesis chunk. Now I need two numbers that multiply to be eight, but add up to six. Those two numbers are a positive four and a positive two. So my answer is here, X equals negative four, X equals negative two. Based on the zero product property, if I plug in either of those for X, I'd get zero as my result. Uh, number two, I'm gonna move that eight X to the other side because we like to see these equal to zero. I'll factor out a GCF of 2x, and I'm left with x minus 4. And from here, I can go ahead and solve. Uh, anytime I have x hanging outside parentheses as a GCF, it's going to be 0. And then x minus 4, so I'd have a solution of 4. Uh, number 3, I'm going to first start off by getting that constant value to the left side of the equation. So 2x squared minus x minus 3, now it comes down to factoring. Uh, there is no GCF, so I know my parentheses have to start off with a 2x and a 1x. And then the other numbers have to be multiples, or sorry, factors of 3. So it's either a 1 here and a 3 here, or a 3 here and a 1 here. Um, let's see, if I put a 1 here and a 3 here, this would give me a 2x on the outside and a 3x on the inside. So if I made that a positive 2x and a negative 3x, that would combine to give me a negative 1x. Therefore, my two answers would be x equals, let's see, opposite of the second number divided by the first, so three halves, and x equals negative one. The next part is going to be using our calculators. So we're going to graph and find the zeros here. So that typically indicates we are not going to have pretty answers, and that's okay. So first one, let's get this going. I have x squared plus 5x plus 3. Let me take a look at the graph. Uh, so it looks like negative 4 point something and negative point something. To calculate this, I hit second and then right above trace. Option 2. And it's going to ask for left bound and right bound. So left bound, I'll move my cursor to the left of the x-intercept. Right bound, I go to the right. Skip past the guess. So I've got negative 4.303 after some rounding. And then let's do the same thing for the other one. So left bound, I'll go right here. And then the right bound, somewhere past there, right there's good. And we are getting negative 0.697. Number five is going to be very, very similar. First thing I have to do though is move that 11 to the other side. So x squared minus 7x minus 11. So minus 7x minus 11. On my y equals hit menu take a look at the graph oh boy okay so it looks like negative one point something and then i don't know eight nine something so I'll go to our second calc option two left bound right bound so move my cursor to the left and to the right of that intercept and it looks like i've got negative 1.322 and x equals, let's do the same thing. So second, then calc, option two, left bound. So my cursor is gonna disappear for a bit, but if I keep an eye right here on the y values, I can kind of see when it comes back up. Wait for it, wait for it, there it is. So left bound, and then the right bound, hit enter to skip past the guess, and 8.322 would be our answer there. All right, next step. Solving by completing the square. Uh, first and foremost, for completing the square, I don't like to have any number attached to my x squared, so I'm going to divide that out of both sides. So this would be x squared minus 4x, and I'm going to leave a blank space, equals negative 1, blank space. And now I need to ask myself, what number do I want to see in that blank? Well, to figure that out, I take half of that value and square it. So half of negative 4 is negative 2, squared is 4. Now I can write this left-hand side in factored form, which would be x minus 2 quantity squared equals 3. From here, I'd square each side, move that 2 over, and I should get a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of 3.
3. On number 7, we're going to move the 3 over, so x squared plus 2x, leave it a blank space, equals negative 3, followed by a blank space. I need to figure out what number do I want to see here so that it's a perfect square trinomial, so I take half of 2 and square it, that would be a 1. So now I have x plus 1 quantity squared equals, that would be negative 2. If I tried to solve this by taking square roots of each side, I'm going to get an imaginary solution, so I would say no real solutions. So what that means is if I were to graph this parabola, it would never hit the x-axis. It would have zero x-intercepts. All right, next up, quadratic formula. Remember, quadratic formula will always work, even if completing the square is not ideal and the factoring doesn't work. So we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let me scooch this up a bit. So this would be negative 2 plus or minus, let's see, 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 3 is 12, so that's actually 4 plus 12, which would be 16. Oh, that's a gross line, all over 6. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, so it's really 2 plus or minus 4 all over 6. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, over 6 is 1 third. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6, over 6 is negative 1. So those would be my two answers, 1 third and negative 1. Uh, number 9, I'm going to move everything over to one side. So minus 3x and a plus 1, all of that equals 0. Same thing, the opposite of b, plus or minus b squared, which would be 9, minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times 1, so minus 4 all over 2a. So that would be 3 plus or minus uh, rad 5 all over 2, and that cannot get any prettier than that. Next step, opposite of b is 4 plus or minus square root of b squared, so 16 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So if I simplify the discriminant, the stuff underneath that radical, I'd have 16 minus, let's see, 4 times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. Holy smokes, that's a big number. 16 minus 56, that would be negative 40. So 4 plus or minus red, negative 40, all over 4. That would be no real solutions because we cannot take the square root of a negative value. All right. 11, 12, and 13, any method except by graphing. So any method I want to choose is perfectly viable. Um, so that means either completing a square, maybe taking square roots, things along those lines. So let's get to it. Uh, for this one, I only see x showing up once, so I'm going to move the 8 to the other side. So 2x squared equals negative 8. Divide out the 2, I get x squared equals negative 4. Um, if I try taking the square root of each side there, can't take the square root of negatives, so no real solutions. Number 12, I'm going to move everything over to one side just to start. So x squared minus 4x, that's a minus, it looks a little sloppy. Minus 3 equals 0. Um, if I can factor it, I'd like to. I don't really think there's anything that multiplies to negative 3 and adds up to a negative 4. Bummer. Okay, so it doesn't factor. I'm going to go ahead and do some completing the square. So I'll pretend there's a blank space here and a blank space there. In those blank spaces, it would have to go 4. So I'd have x minus 2 quantity squared, and that is this left side factored down, equals 7. So then to solve, square root each side, move the 2 over, 2 plus or minus rad 7. All right, 13. Let's see, 2x squared minus 2x minus 5. Hopefully it factors. Maybe it doesn't. We'll see. So I know it has to start off with a 2x and a 1x because that's the only way to get a 2x squared. Um, and the only way to get a 5 is with a 1 and a 5. So maybe it's a 1 here and a 5 here. Let's see. That would be a 10x and a 1x. That's not going to work. Maybe it's a 1 and then a 5. That'd be a 2x and a 5x. That's not going to give me a negative 2. So it can't factor. If it can't factor, that means we are forced to do some completing square or quadratic formula. 
This has a number out front, so I'm going to do quadratic formula. Opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this would be 2 plus or minus, let's see, 4 minus, that would be 8 times 5, so 40, and that's a plus because negative, negative, so 44. Oops. So 2 plus or minus, we're at 44 all over 4. Sorry about that sloppy penmanship. <clears throat> all right, next one. All we're doing is combining like terms or multiplying, and we have to keep in mind that i squared is equal to negative 1. All right, so here I've got 2 minus 7 gives me a negative 5. 4 minus a negative, so plus 5 would be a 9i. Number 15, 4 times 6 is 24. I times I is I squared, but I squared again is negative 1, so negative 24. See, 9 plus 4i squared is really 9 plus 4i times another 9 plus 4i. So it would be 81 plus 36i plus 36i plus 16i squared. Well, I know these guys are going to give me a 72i. And this is really a minus 16, so I have 81 minus 16 is what's happening. Because again, i squared is negative 1. And that's 65. So 65 plus 72i. All right, here we've got conjugate pairs. Anytime there's the same thing, one's a plus, one's a minus, the middle term is going to cancel out. And I'm going to have the square of the first, so 6 squared minus 2i squared. So that's 36 minus 4i squared. Well, don't forget, i squared is really negative 1, so this is really 36 plus 4, which is 40. Number 18, if we distribute this out, we get 16 plus 56i plus 2i plus 7i squared, so that's minus 7. Combine our like terms, we get 9 plus 58i. And then number 19 is just straight combining like terms. 5 plus 5 is 10. 2i plus a negative 2i. Well, 0i, so we're done. All right. Um, finding the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. It's not asking us to actually solve the entire equation. We just need to figure out the discriminant. So negative 4 squared is 16 plus, because I have two negatives. That'd be 20. So my discriminant here is 36, which tells me we have two real solutions. Uh, number 21, if I did b squared minus 4ac, that'd be 16 minus 4 times 1 times 5. So 16 minus 20, that's negative 4. So that means there are zero real, but two imaginary solutions. Number 22 would be the exact same process. You're just trying to figure out positive versus negative solutions. Um, let's see. I think right here is going to be a good pausing point, and then I'll carry on in a, a part two video where we'll start off on uh, 23, and then we'll finish this out all the way through 30. And then we should be good. Awesome.